Hey everyone, we're going to be talking about the Switch Pro and a little bit about the Switch Mini because we've had some conversations in the past. My theory, uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, check it out up here uh, where I talk about how I think the Switch Pro might be what the Switch was always intended to be uh, versus what the Switch is today, which has a multitude of issues and a lot of aspects of it feel rushed even still right now two years on and that maybe they needed more time to get the real switch done the wii u was failing etc go watch that video for the entire premise on that i know a lot of people uh started subscribing to this channel lately because of that video and i felt like it was important to follow it up because when new information comes to light i think it needs to be uh brought to attention uh, because a lot of the Switch Pro rumors, Switch Mini rumors, have been coming from the Wall Street Journal. And the Wall Street Journal is a platform you need to pay to read. And most of us, most people covering this story, are not willing to pay to read the article. Well, I did that very thing today because of another YouTuber. And that YouTuber is Super Metal Dave. Uh, Super Mario Dave has obviously been at the forefront of covering Switch Pro and the Nintendo Switch in general way back when it was called NX. And you'll see, you know, all, all of his recent videos, you know, Nintendo Switch Pro is Nintendo's longest secret. You know, it's got 17,000 views on this, 21,000 views on new info. This is about the USB PD thing we brought up in a Prime News episode, uh, which, by the way, we'll talk about that a little bit in this video as well, because the, U the, like, the Nintendo Switch as of today actually does support USB PD, but we'll get into that a bit. Uh, and then the new custom Nintendo Switch Pro SLC, SLC will bring blah, blah, blah. So I give credit to him because he's the one who uh, drew attention to a, a couple things. Uh, first off, if you guys remember, I talked about the Tegra X1 SLC being a 20 nanometer chip and that how NVIDIA would probably like to move away from that process. Well, NVIDIA earlier this year announced this. The Jetson Nano Developer Kit. And this is the big thing I want to give credit to Super Metal Dave on because I was not aware of this developer kit uh, until he brought it to my attention. Now, for those who don't know, the Jetson Nano Developer Kit is one of three different uh, developing kits that NVIDIA is releasing. You can actually buy this thing right now on Amazon. Uh, it is an AI-based kit. It is, it is designed for robots and, and all that stuff. And essentially, it uses a Tegra X1. Um, you can go down to the technical specifications and see like the four gigabyte, 64, you know, blah, 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 uh, the quad core ARM, you know, 57 running at 1.43 gigahertz, etc. But if you go through all of the announcements and all of the spec sheets, you'll find out that it is actually using a Tegra X1, which means that NVIDIA clearly has a processing line open to continue to make Tegra X1s and they're going to continue to make them, which does throw out the theory that Nintendo would need to potentially upgrade the Nintendo Switch because of them needing to move away from the 20 nanometer process. In fact, NVIDIA is still producing Tegra X1s for their own purposes, so obviously they're going to continue to produce them for Nintendo. So yeah, that kind of throws out the theory that the Switch Pro and Switch Mini might replace the current Switch. Instead, the current Switch still might exist in the marketplace as is for quite some time, maybe several years to come. So hey, credit to Super Mario Day for... Uh, digging this up and realizing this was announced just this year. So, hey, look, that's not really proof of anything in terms of them moving away from the Tegra X1. Now, for those who don't know, the Tegra X1 inside of the Nintendo Switch is running downclocked. That's right, we are not even getting the full power of the Tegra X1 in a base Nintendo Switch. And the reason for that is heat dissipation. Even on this development kit, Look at that heat sink. Like, it is using a bigger heat sink than is actually being used inside a Nintendo Switch. And if you scroll down even uh, further, you can watch this video and it'll show active cooling even on top of that heat sink at times. So, yeah, it, Tegra X1 gets pretty hot, is what I'm saying, if you want to run it at its full capabilities. Now, all of that being said, why do we need to talk about the Wall Street Journal? Well, the Wall Street Journal, as you'll see right here, is the place where we where we learned about the launching of two consoles just you know a week and a half ago and they've been uh, originally reporting that we were going to see uh, a new switch pro or whatever this year back in october of last year uh but that article didn't really contain much information other than hey they're hearing that you know they're gonna whatever but as we get into this article you'll see that the wall street journal has uh sources both on the manufacturing side and actual developers who are using the 
new switches. So let's just read the article and comment along the way because I think there's a lot of interesting information in here. And again, this is information you typically are not going to find because the Wall Street Journal does paywall all of this content. I have prepaid for two months, hoping that they have more Switch Pro news heading up to E3 because they do note that one of their sources does think Nintendo is going to unveil this at E3. So let's go down here. So it says Nintendo plans to launch two new versions of the Switch gaming console as early as this summer. People familiar with the matter said, as the company seeks to sustain sales momentum for the product going into the cru crucial third year. Now this is all, this little beginning part is known publicly. That's the part of the article they have public. Uh, one version will have enhanced features targeted at avid gamers, uh, although it won't be as powerful as Sony Corp's PlayStation 4 Pro or Microsoft's Xbox One X, according to parts suppliers and software developers for Nintendo who have access to the prototype of the machine. The other version is a cheaper option for casual gamers that Nintendo sees as a successor to its aging handheld 3DS device, the supplier and developer say. This is interesting because maybe it's a clamshell design. Interesting prospect here. Let's let's continue on now. That that's that's all the information that's been available publicly. That's what all of these videos on Switch Pro over the past week or so have been made on. But now we have all the additional information, so let's get into it. The new models are likely to be unveiled at the E3 Video Game Expo in Los Angeles in June and possibly released a few months later. One person familiar with Nintendo's plans said Nintendo declined to comment. So, yeah, E3. I've been saying it for a while. E3 is when they're going to unveil this stuff. So, oh, I'm going to be at E3. I might go hands-on with this stuff. Exciting. So, here we go. Uh, the Switch introduced in March 2017 has been central to Nintendo's recent business success. This is true. Uh, the company earns more than 80% of its total revenue from Switch hardware and software sales, and investors are forced to focus on how long the console can remain a profit driver. Again, all of this is true and easily verifi verifiable by looking through Nintendo's financials. Industry watchers expect sales for the Switch to begin declining soon. Analysts polled by Visible Alpha, a provider of market forecasts, anticipate an average of 17.9 million units of the Switch were sold for this past fiscal year. Uh, and then it's going to have 17.4 million for the new fiscal year, which is happening right now. It runs basically April through March. So uh, we're about to get the update for last fiscal year at the end of this month. So that's notable. Uh, but yeah, we're in a new fiscal year right now, and they think the sales are actually going to decline. It is notable 17.9 million is actually higher than the full year one sales, but uh, you know, Nintendo systems do tend to show a little decline in year three. Uh, we kind of be in the exception where it just kept exploding, but anyways, let's, let's continue. Uh, video game hardware makers generally come out with new consoles every five to six years, and it's common for them to update the devices in the middle of their life cycles to keep the momentum going. Obviously, we know this happens. This is just a general statement of facts. You know, Sony introduced the PlayStation 4 in November 2013, updated it with the less expensive version in September of 2016 in the high-end model two months later, um, and the sales of the PlayStation 4 remain strong. It's been selling like 20 million a year like clockwork. PlayStation 4 is just killing it. Um, Nintendo suppliers and game developers have been talking with their investors about the new Switch machines for several months. People who have used, that's right, People who have gone hands-on with the devices say they aren't just similar new versions with a higher or lower performance. Now, remember, not just, not instead of, not just. That does mean that they are higher and lower performance potentially, but that's not the only thing. There's some significant differences with these platforms compared to the original Switch. Now, we actually learn what some of these differences might be or will be. In fact, we learned one particular item in uh, for the Switch Mini. Um, you would be wrong to think the version is similar to what Sony did with the PlayStation 4 Pro, and the other is just a cheap alternative that looks very similar to some past handheld machines, um, say Sony's you know, PlayStation Vita as a comparison. One person who has used the new device has said, the Switch is a hybrid device that can be played in either handheld or connected to a larger screen. Prices for the new Switch model couldn't be learned to cut costs for the cheaper version. Nintendo plans to eliminate some of the functions used in the original Switch console. I think this is a given. We all expect them to eliminate certain features to get the cost down on it. And one of those features is going to be the vibration feature in its controllers according to suppliers of Nintendo parts. The company judged the new Switch models won't need the vibration feature 
because there won't be many games released using the full benefit of it. So HD Rumble, um, that's going away, at least in the Switch Mini. Now, they are saying the Switch models, the new Switch models. Does this mean they're going to get rid of HD Rumble in the Switch Pro too? That is pretty significant to me. Um, granted, I do think there should be Rumble of some type. But HD Rumble is massively underutilized. It's a brilliant piece of technology that even games that take advantage of it, most people can't tell the difference between that and standard Rumble. Uh, the few games that do take major advantage of it, 1, 2, Switch being a prime example, are very few and far between and aren't typically why people buy the system. Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey don't really make good uses of it, and they're the best-selling games. Same with Smash Bros. So... Um, I could see them actually deciding that HD Rumble is just not going to be part of the future of the new devices. So uh, that would be interesting. I don't know if this means there won't be any Rumble, but obviously the expense of HD Rumble is probably being cut, at least in the Switch Mini, if not also in the Switch Pro. That is what they is saying. This is according to the Wall Street Journal. I'm just reading what they say and extrapolating. You guys you know, can extrapolate for yourselves and come up with your own opinions on this. All right, so then it says Nintendo is also adjusting its suppliers for the new models. Um, Sharp Corp, an Osaka-based company that had long supplied Nintendo components to Nintendo video game machines, but they failed to win the deal for the original Switch. They are expected to provide liquid crystal displays, so the screens uh, for the new Switch machines. Uh, this is important, too, because Nintendo has had issues with the current supplier. This is actually something we've known for a while. Um, they've had issues with the current supplier because their current supplier uh, works with Apple, and Apple isn't ordering LCD kind of screens anymore. So, like, they've been trying to fight with Nintendo to get more lines to make things for Apple because they have a bigger contract with Apple. So this is actually something we've known for quite some time. Not surprising that Nintendo might have been looking to go back to their old LCD supplier just because that company is obviously willing to... Um, continue to make LCDs at a decent price. Uh, so that's a kind of a minor here nor there, outside of the fact that uh, Wall Street Journal has proven in the past to actually have contacts at this place. So um, that's good news for Wall Street Journal's verifiable information here anyways, because they have prior leaks that were linked to them having contacts at that company. Anyways, uh, suppliers and third-party game developers say Nintendo is preparing to release new game titles from well-known franchises. We already know this, Animal Crossing, Pokemon, etc. That's obviously Nintendo's goal this year. Slam the system with games and sell a ton of them. Um, some people say sales of Nintendo devices usually weaken in the third year. This is actually true. Usually. Not always, but it is usually true. Usually year two is the peak year for most Nintendo systems. Anyways, uh, while others say games to be released this year are stronger than ever before, one executive at a Nintendo supplier said, I honestly don't know how things will turn out, but I have my fingers tightly crossed. So, uh, and, and Yang, Yang Yi here also um, contributed to this article that was written by Ta Takahashi Machiazuki. All right, so what do we get from all of this information? Huh? Well, like, 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 what do we get? So what's the takeaway from the Wall Street Journal article? The takeaway is that the Nintendo Switch Pro and the Nintendo Switch Mini are not going to just be this PlayStation 4 style upgrade. And the PlayStation 4 style upgrade obviously is the PlayStation 4 Pro. And that was a, a, a decent leap forward in that technology. Well, that leap forward is basically what the new Nintendo 3DS did. If you remember the Eurogamer article, kind of said it would be similar to a new Nintendo 3DS style jump. Well, the new Nintendo style 3DS jump was like... You know, two more CPU cores, uh, increasing the speed of the CPU by like nearly 400% uh, or 300%, whatever it was. It was a pretty big increase. Doubling the VRAM. Like, it was a pretty big jump. It was a PlayStation 4 Pro style jump. Unfortunately, because of the technology we're talking about at the time, that still isn't a huge leap forward uh, just because things were already like really really slow on the OG 3DS. So even with all that extra cores and the extra speed and the extra VRAM and, and the extra RAM, they actually doubled the RAM in the, in the new Nintendo 3DS, it, there really wasn't much that people noticed a difference between the two platforms. Granted, I did. Faster frame rates, that was a big thing. The UI was much more usable on the new Nintendo 3DS, but again, it was it, it felt minor on the consumer end just because the 3DS was already such a weak platform that even doing all that, it was still the new Nintendo 3DS was still a really, really weak platform. Now, so what does this mean then? It means that whatever we're getting with the Switch Pro, and the Switch Mini for that matter, 
is something that is not going to be perfectly predictable by us in the public. Um, so while I do think we're looking at a custom SOC here, uh, I think the custom SOC that we're going to get is going to be because we're going to get something that is unexpected. If it was going to be the expected change, an expected change, it literally could just redesign the switch to somehow run the Tegra X1 at clock, uh, like at base clocks. But I think a custom SOC comes into play because that also can lead to Nintendo potentially getting cheaper chips. Like if N NVIDIA is trying to repurpose the Tegra X1 now for their AI platforms, maybe that means that now Nintendo wants their own custom SOC out of NVIDIA, one that is specifically targeted for Nintendo's use case. Because now, as you see the Tiger X1 getting repurposed for other things, Nintendo might be like, hey, look, you know, we've been working together. We have a 10-year contract. That's what NVIDIA, NVIDIA said they have a 10-year contract. So that's like verifiable. So the big deal for here is that I think that NVIDIA and Nintendo have been combined to be working on a custom SOC this whole time. And that custom SOC is going to be a part of the major differences between whatever the Switch Pro and Switch Mini are doing and the original Switch. I also think because there is such a stark difference in what's going to be happening with these platforms that the OG Nintendo Switch is still going to be sold for quite some time. So I don't know that the Switch Pro or the Switch Mini are actually going to replace the Switch. If you remember way back when, uh, when they were talking about NX and then eventually Switch in the very early days of the platform, Nintendo kept calling it a family of systems. A family of systems. This means we could see many different forms of the Switch. And the form we have now, where it is handheld and able to be used, docked and undocked and all this stuff, uh, is one form. Another form could be handheld only, a la a Switch Mini, which could have some changes to it because it's only handheld. It's possible that a Switch Pro might not be able to be handheld at all. It's possible a Switch Pro is only for use connected to your TV and that you'll be able to cross-share saves across all of the platforms. Just some food for thought. Now, I don't know that this is where Nintendo's going, but when they talk about a platform that is not just your typical upgrade, you start to wonder, what's Nintendo thinking here? What's this family of systems thing they have going on? They're not going to do something traditional. I think most of us expect a traditional upgrade, right? A uh, you know, minor bump or major bump, whatever the case, in what the Switch is already doing. But what if, what if they're making a true family of systems to target every single type of demographic? You have the hybrid target, you have the handheld only target, and you have the home console style target. I'm, I, I think this is an interesting prospect, especially if they all cross communicate, all use the same cartridges. I, I honestly think that this could be a very interesting future. Uh, and as Wall Street Journal says, we're probably finding out about this at E3. So lots of lot, lots of food for thought. And I want to see what you guys think about all this information down in the comments below because there's a lot to take in here. Now that we have the full context of that Wall Street Journal article, now that we know the Tagger X1 is still going to be in active development with or without the OG Switch around, there's a lot to think about. And I just want to put the thought out there that Nintendo could be doing something completely unexpected. And... Even what I'm saying now could be so far off base from what that unexpected thing is. Anyways, I'm Nintendo Rovajets from Nintendo Prime. Be sure to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate bundle giveaway through the Gleam.io link down in the description. Drop a like on this video. Subscribe for more content. This won't be the last time we're talking about these platforms. As more information comes out, as more is uncovered, uh, we'll be right there talking about all of it. And E3 cannot come soon enough. We'll be there in person. So if these devices are there to go hands-on with, you know we'll be there going hands-on and explaining exactly what you can do with these platforms. All right, folks, we'll catch you in the next video.